Hello and welcome to Nintendo Nostalgia, episode 167. I am your host, Ryan Black, and I am joined by my co-host, Joshua Taylor, and we are back and we are playing with power. Joshua, how are you doing this week? As well as I can be in all of this uh, chaos going on right now. Oh, I hear you, man. I hear you. Um, we are not alone today. Uh, we have a guest. We have the Nintendame. Hello. Caro, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you for letting me be here. Anytime I get to talk about Animal Crossing, I am ecstatic. Awesome, awesome. Well, we all know that we are Radical Rexing about Animal Crossing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead and get into that segment here uh, with what we are Radical Rexing about. <laughs> all right, so we are just days away from Animal Crossing, and I cannot wait. I yep. have mine preloaded. Uh, I had physical. I was like, oh, I got to go into GameStop and cancel my free order, you know, and buy it digitally. And I walk into GameStop, and they're like, oh, well, you know what? Let's uh, let's just switch that over to a digital code, and you can still purchase it from us. I'm like, okay, win-win. You know, I get my yeah. GameStop points and get my Nintendo coins, and everything's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm debating still doing that just because of the way that everything is. I have my pre-order physically in a Best Buy, and it came with, like, a little bell bag. And I want to get that still, but I'm not willing to wait at all for right the physical if I am not allowed to go to Best Buy because of the virus and all this stuff. So I'm still debating getting it early in pre-order or preloading it on my new Switch. Josh, you excited for this one? Yeah, I'm going for full digital with this one. I go back and forth. I'm, I'm really not consistent with it. For, for This is one of those ones that I know I'm going to be jumping in and out of, um, possibly daily. So yeah. I don't want to have to be switching out the cards, and I don't have the best setup for keeping those handy anyway mm -hmm. so it's just something else i could lose so yeah i'm getting it digital Prelude. yeah it's forcing me to do it um to go digital and i should have done that in the first place i was just going to go for physical because that's what i usually do but since i lost my new leaf copy a long time ago like i don't want to go through oh. that again and so like mm -hmm. i really should have done this in the first place but this kind of forces my hand to do it and i'm glad that i'm going with digital now the good thing is at least with this one the data will be backed up to the switch and it wouldn't be on the cart as opposed to that yeah. so if you lost your cart it you would still have it on your mm -hmm. on your switch but still that's so sad <laughs> yeah yeah i've been several years without new leaf now so i'm ready for oh, this animal crossing absolutely I'm totally ready um but uh let's go ahead and talk about a little of the other things that we are radical rexing about um joshua why don't you kick us off sure so i guess outside of the the gaming realm of things for a moment. Of course, the whole, at the time of this recording, the whole coronavirus thing is going crazy. So it's a day by day thing. So at work today, I got a laptop and all kinds of other junk so I could work from home. But apparently, we're not working from home. It depended on some announcements this evening. But anyway, um, West Virginia got their first case as of today. Um, so yeah, it's just a day by day thing. So might be working home, might not. Um, but besides all that craziness, um, yeah, just getting ready for Animal Crossing and I don't know about either one of you two, but also Doom on the same day, <laughs> just complete <laughs> polar opposites. I um, haven't played Doom since the original Doom in 1994 <laughs> or five, whenever I played that game. So it's the 2016 one's really good. Like the newest reboot or whatever. Mm -hmm. but, and I played this one at Gamescom for a little while, and I know I'm going to have some fun with it. But mm -hmm. but yeah, really, other than that, just I guess what I've been playing the most of, just kind of randomly, because I've had it on my Xbox One for a little while, is uh, the game Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah. Um, I'd never played it back in the day when it was on GameCube and all of that. So 
just got into it recently, and I, th- I think I'm near the end. I'm on the moon. You are um, very near the end, yes. But I've really enjoyed it. I kind of feel like I've had to rush the last little bit. Like, I wanted to go and get everything. I was like, ah, I want to get this done by Friday. So I went ahead and, and went there. But I, it's it's very unique. It, at, like, when I first saw it, I was thinking, like, I don't know if I was expecting some kind of shooter or, or what I was expecting out of it. But it's definitely not that. Um, <laughs> I like the whole um, weird photographer thing and then the mm-hmm. stealth part of it and just the world. It's all pretty cool. It's all different. I don't want to get too far onto that, though. I know we plan on talking about that on another day. So, But... Yeah, that's about it. Oh, I got a cool um, Art of Cuphead book a little while ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw that one live. Yeah. So that's pretty sweet. Cool. Yeah, that's about it. (laughs) Cool, cool. Um, I just completed my Pokemon uh, home decks. Um, I've got a living deck sitting there now, and I got the Magarna that's Pokeball colored uh, from that. Uh, The last one that was... was, uh, hanging me up was uh, Meltan and Melmetal. And uh, I was able to get my Melmetal today, uh, you know, just slowly grinding out all those those uh, Meltan catches. That took me forever. I don't know how you've done that. Like, it's just, it blows my mind. But the, the Magirna, like, that's the old, quote-unquote, ancient colors. Yes. That's a, that's a reward now? Yes. If you have <gasps> a complete National Dex in Pokemon Home, then you get that. Oh my gosh, because they never actually put it into the 3DS. Like, they never put it in the Sun and Moon game. So, yeah. That's awesome. People were hacking it in. That's great. <laughs> I, good thing to know. I was actually playing Pokemon too. So, that's a good thing to know. Yeah, I finally just buckled down uh, last week and started up uh, Let's Go Eevee and just went straight through to get to Fuchsia City to, to be able to do the whole Meltan thing. So. Mm-hmm. I finally got that all done, and I I luckily completed a mission that gave me, like, a bunch of silver pineapple berries, and so that helped me get a lot of those candies and make up that difference. Yeah. So glad to be done with that and and, uh, ready for Animal Crossing. I was worried I wasn't going to get it done in time for Animal Crossing, but it is done. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was really cool. Um, And I'm probably going to be playing a little less Pokemon Go now. I was kind of playing it obsessively there for a bit. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's probably a good thing that I'm not going outside and doing Pokemon Go <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, they're they're actually doing a lot of things. They're make they're like upping the uh, rates, and I think mm-hmm. they have special items now that are in the shop. Like you get thirty incense for like one coin, something crazy. The uh, the Meltan spawn was really really fast. Like maybe every I don't know, two minutes at that, maybe. Really? That's good. It was good. really, really fast. That's how one of, one of the reasons I blazed through it so so well is because of that. They upped the rate on everything, and I guess that includes Meltan. So now's a good time to do it if you can. Okay. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is there anything that you've been Radical Rexing about, Carol? Uh, I, I have been playing I have been playing uh, Pokemon Shield. I never finished the game because it just didn't sit well with me for the time. Mm-hmm. I think I was playing so many different things that it was really difficult for me to actually sit down with one thing around the time that it came out but i'm trying to finish the decks and i want to get the full living decks like you're doing that's funny that we're actually working on the same thing right now i was i was i let my wow subscription lapse at the beginning of march because i was like i know i'm not going to be playing this for the full month right now so i need to just not pay for it this month and Mm -hmm. i was looking for things to do in the meantime so i went back to pokemon and i'm working on getting the decks completed and uh hopefully Yay, now I get to get a Magirna. Like, I had no idea that that was a thing. That really excites me, though. Uh, you basically do everything in the Pokemon Home app to do the transferring to get in the app, but then you go to your app on your phone to uh, claim the reward. Okay, so. I gotcha. I was like, yeah. uh, is it going to drop in my box? What do I need to do? And I just opened I up the st- phone app and found it. Yeah, I still haven't actually transferred everything over from bank yet so i need Ah. to do that my 3ds is completely dead it's been dead for probably a year i haven't (laughs) charged it or anything so i need to charge it and get it up so i can transfer everything uh but once that happens just whatever i'm missing in sword and shield and then i should be good to go awesome awesome well i wish you the best of luck in that it's uh thank you it's always an undertaking to get everything yep uh 
but uh, you're at the home stretch and uh, yeah. ever closer to Animal Crossing as well. So I know. I think I'll probably have Animal Crossing before I finish, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Home's still waiting there for me. All right. Before so, we talk about the old yeah. Animal Crossings, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, do you all have like a cool town name i know you do ryan um or an island name rather yes i do uh because i i like dabbled in writing a little bit several years back and there was this uh universe that i did where they lived in a um sort of like a town on a harbor and the harbor town was called aqua marina so i wanted to actually name my new leaf town that but there weren't enough characters so i mm-hmm. named it amarina that was the name of it uh but now there's perfectly 10 characters okay. and aqua marina fit so i was like and it's on an island it's absolutely perfect so that's gonna be the name of my island nice. awesome yep josh uh have you decided on one yet i know what i'm leaning towards <laughs> i've had like a list of like 10 and everything has to be like a reference, but I like to put my own spin on it. Like it's either something ukulele or banjo or whatever. Mm. Um, but no, I think I'm going with that because of the whole thing I got to do with Ubisoft and rabbits and all of that last year. I think it's, it's, I, I, I can't say it the way I can spell it. It's, it's cooler when you read it, but I think it's going to be Wahala. So B W A H. That's cute. A L L A. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Me being the Metroid fan that I am, it's gonna be Josodia. It's what my all of my towns nice. are named. <laughs> nice. Sweet. All right. Well, I think it's time that we take take a trip back uh, to the past, to our nostalgic days playing Animal Crossing. Yes. Um, we are covering both Wild World this week and City Folk. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Caro, uh, when did these games come out? Uh, so Wild World came out in December of 2005. And um, the City Folk, which is, I like to call it sort of an expansion. They pretty much just it's the same game ported over to the Wii. They added a city part to it. It came out in November of 2008. Pretty quick turnaround. <laughs> yeah. For you know, all things considered. Yeah, three years. <laughs> so... These uh these games uh took the original and made it more accessible via internet. Um, one on portable console and one on uh one on the uh, the Wii, mm-hmm. and uh, I think they did a pretty good job with these games. Um, what were some of your earliest like nostalgic memories of first for Wild World and then City Folk? Um. Well, for Wild World, I never actually owned a DS myself. I went from the Game Boy Advance straight to the 3DS. So my sister had the DS, and because my sister and I loved the GameCube version so much, she actually got the copy of Wild World first. I was not allowed to play it very much because she didn't want me ruining it in her town, uh, but uh, she got it so late in the cycle that by the time that Wild World had come out, City Folk was pretty much like a year away. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, Wild World, I don't have much experience with, much memories aside from my sister, my little sister being very stingy. But uh, City Folk, I remember, you know, actually using the Wii microphone for the first time with people uh, over. It was very, very weird and very, very spotty. Um, But Mm -hmm. um, I also have very terrible memories of running around and having your grass absolutely deplete and just having a complete dirt town. Because you would mm-hmm. walk and it would make an automatic path, and that's not what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, so luckily, we've come very far these days, and <laughs> they are now giving us actual paths. It's a good thing. 
uh, right. but other than other than that, like like I was telling you before show, I don't really have as many nostalgic moments with this game as I do the GameCube version, which was mm-hmm. my very first, and we played it for years and years and years. And uh, I just have a lot of memories of renting it at Blockbuster before we finally owned the copy, and then just playing on that thing every morning before school, every morning or every evening getting home, and every time in between that we could. <laughs> So, Josh, do you have any memories of either game? I do. What's funny is I kind of have the same nostalgia, so to speak, like with Wild World. Um, I owned it. I've I've played every every Animal Crossing game except for Happy Home Designer, but I remember losing Wild World pretty early on. Oh, no. (laughs) I I have no idea where it went. Um, City Folk, I I did put some more time into. I, I haven't touched it in years but i do remember one of the biggest things i do remember is that whole we speak i think it was called yeah that's what it was called because i've got my wife and i were dating i would got her one as well so we could connect and all of that sort of thing um so that was kind of an introduction to voice chat for nintendo fans and it was different yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i mean i, I liked I, that was I guess now that I'm thinking back to it, that was some of my earliest memories of um, jumping onto an online game uh, as a, you know, longtime Nintendo fan anyway, and actually getting some good time out of it. Because it wasn't like Smash Brothers was another early one, but that had really bad lag. Oh, terrible. And I feel like City Folk, that didn't matter as much. Like it it probably did lag some, but it wasn't as big of a deal. Um, So I got some good time out of that. Um, other than that, yeah, like with Wild Wild World, I can't even say it. I really struggle to think of much I did in that one just because I didn't have it for very long before it disappeared. Um, again, with the, the GameCube one was probably the one I'd put the most time into back then um, for a number of reasons. But one of those being the Nintendo games that you could play in it. But Yeah. <laughs> So um, I, I rolled on into Wild World. Um, uh, that was my introduction game. Um, the reason I got into Wild World was uh, I was misled. I was tricked. I was duped. <laughs> oh, no. So uh, Jacob Rush played the first Animal Crossing and just, like, raved about it to me and told me I had to get the game. And and I heard that there was a portable version coming out on the DS. And I'm like, you know what? I'll get that version. I don't get to sit sit at home very often and and play something like this. But if it if it ever like goes mobile, I'll get this game. Because he told me like it had NES games on it, and that was like what I had to do. I had to get those NES yeah. games. That then there wasn't a virtual console, so that was the only way you could get those nostalgic games without having right, the original. Right. Yep. So I just like you know I was so excited to get into this game. This is gonna be my Animal Crossing. I I get into it, and Jacob's like, I'm not getting it. I'm like, what? You're not getting it? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and now he just doesn't even like it anymore. It just blows my mind. Yeah, and I think it was because of Wild World that he stopped liking it. Um, I and I, I was reporting to him that like all the things that didn't have an, he, he kept trying to talk to me like I was playing his game and like the holidays and everything, and that stuff was stripped out for this version. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, well, why would I play something that's like so dumbed down? Uh, from the GameCube version, and I was kind of sad that, like, you know, but I was hooked at this point. Like, I couldn't stop playing. Sure, like, sure. Fossils were my thing. I had to collect all the fossils. That was, oh, yes. That was the perfect thing. Like, I didn't care anything about gyroids. Those things were gone. I'd sold them mm-hmm. instantly. I didn't even know what those were. <laughs> I just wanted the fossils. Yeah. Gyroids stood between me and collecting my whole fossil collection. So, and that was kind of my first, like, introduction to Wild World. And uh, with City Folk, um, I dove into City Folk. Um, I got it right away, uh, mainly because of the accessory, the uh, the We Speak accessory. Mm-hmm. Um, that was like I, I have to get weird Nintendo accessories. It's just something that <laughs> I have yeah, to do. Yeah, right. I've got piles and piles of useless plastic right. in boxes, but you know I can't stop. <laughs> I mean, there was the GameCube microphone, and yeah, well, there was a there was gosh, there was. The N64 microphone for Hey You Pikachu. So we've yes. had microphones for a long time. But this was a room mic. It was so cool. I know. I know. It really was. 
So uh, I don't want to get too much into my Wild World experience because that's where my nostalgia lies. Um, and then uh, City Folk has some nostalgia, but I think that one was played more by my wife than than me. So um, I wanted to show you my plushy fossil. I know you will appreciate it. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> Imagine digging one of those up. <laughs> I need more Animal Crossing plushies in general. <laughs> yes, they're so good. <laughs> Just speaking around that time period and like random Nintendo peripherals and stuff, um, did you have the Animal Crossing e-reader cards? Yes, yeah. I did. You did? Oh, I'm yes. so jealous. <laughs> I did have a good handful of them. I, I, I'm wanting to say I've still got them put up in storage somewhere, but I had a good bit of them. I don't even remember what they did. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> they gave you they gave you patterns certain, um yeah they gave you patterns and they okay. gave you uh certain sometimes they would give you codes and there were a few of them that actually gave you the nes games mm-hmm. okay yeah for the GameCube, I remember that. at least cool okay it's been years since i've plugged in my e- e-reader mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's one thing that i want to buy for my collection for sure but the cards i don't think i'll ever be able to own all of them <laughs> <laughs> i've got Minus one card. I've actually got the Mario Party um, too, e-reader yeah. game. Um, nice. So, yeah, I, I'd love to, to take that out. But we have an e-reader episode uh, down the pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's for another one. <laughs> I, I always derail this stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's been a day. So I want to move into um, a little bit of, like, this is a very, very social game. So I want to know, like, what kind of social interactions do you have? Did you meet any friends through Animal Crossing? Were there any weird experiences? Like, what was your experience just sharing this with other people? Um, you know, I don't know if I met anybody until after I went through college, and it was actually between games. So City Folk came out in 2008, which was the year that I was going to started going to college. Uh, I was already in college by the time it came out, and then while or I'm sorry, New Leaf came out after it, I graduated in 2013. So I made friends that were into Nintendo when I was there, but we didn't actually play together on the GameCube version. Mm-hmm. We never played, or I'm sorry, the the Wii version. We never played City Folk together, uh, but we really started to mostly because we weren't seeing each other anymore because we'd all graduated from college together. We played New Leaf together all the time. Mm-hmm. But my Animal Crossing um, social interaction with other people was really just me and my sister up through GameCube and then through City Folk. That was pretty much just our game together. That's what we did. And um, New Leaf was the only time that I actually broke out of just me and my sister doing it and got together with my friends playing it because so many other people were playing it at that point. Awesome. Josh, do you have any experience with the uh, social interaction on Animal Crossing for these games? Yeah, especially with City Folk. Um, really leading up to that, you know, like I said, I didn't spend a whole lot of time with Wild, Wild World, but the GameCube one I had, um, you know, visited like my cousin's town, stepbrother, and maybe another friend and stuff like that. But it was really better by the way because you could get online and actually wander around each other's town at the same time. Yes. Um, and chat and everything else. Now, you couldn't do it if you were in the same room. So that kind of stunk, but you never could do that before anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, so that actually opened that up a good bit. Um, I know I had a friend or two that had it. Um, my wife at the time, well, that, my wife when we were dating at the time. Um, and then like a cousin, cousin of mine, I think. But yeah, so the, it opened that up a good bit. I don't think I like met anybody through that like made any new friends out of it but but yeah it it definitely opened up that social side of it so that's that's one thing i'm looking forward to with the new one because i think it'll it'll be that but multiplied yeah (laughs) i can't wait to decorate my town i don't know what i'm gonna do yet i haven't even decided but (gasps) everybody's been laying out their towns with like maps and stuff and like they're they're saying where they're gonna terraform their rivers and everything and i'm just like i just want to wing it I just want to wing it. Mm-hmm. I, I did actually like the city, like how the city was set up in that game, um, where yeah. it was kind of like a big deal to jump on the bus mm-hmm. and and go out there to this whole other place. And I think Cap'n 
you know, had his little thing he did on the way there and was saying and everything. <laughs> yep. Well, I gotta say, like, we'll get into characters a little later, but uh, that, I got some some characters in the city that I really enjoyed. So, um, but uh, my social interaction started uh, with uh, the Wi-Fi Nintendo Wi-Fi uh, experience on with Wild World. Um, you could connect with other people um, over the internet and uh, kind of just kind of hang out. It was very basic, but uh, you could you could chop other people's trees down in their village and and. Oh. And that's awful, but that's <laughs> not good. That's why I, I made, I made sure... that mistake. <laughs> I I made sure that it was people that I knew if they were coming in. <laughs> yeah, I made that mistake um, once. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but that was in Wild World, and uh, I don't know. It, it got better from there. But this was something that I saw a lot of value in. I got the there was an accessory that came out. I think around like Metroid Prime Hunters time, basically maybe a little bit before that, it was kind of like a headset thing that you plugged in uh, to your your DS, mm-hmm. and um, it just fit on one ear, and it had it was just like a basic headset, but it was Nintendo's first headset. Like I had to have this thing. <laughs> I think I remember that very very vaguely. It was white and had a really long cord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think but, I remember that. It had its own like proprietary plug-in it plugged in not only to the the headphone jack but also like a little thing for the mic so Mm -hmm. um that was kind of a cool feature and i was i used that to talk to complete strangers i don't even know i I didn't take any friends from that game like no no one that i carried over or anything like that yeah Um, i pretty much shut down once people started chopping down my trees and stuff so um but i eventually a couple years later just before city folk came out um, I bought, um, I had a DSi for myself, um, if I'm getting this timeline right, and I bought my wife a, a DS. I don't know if I gave, I gave him my uh, DS Lite at first and then got the DSi later, maybe, um, mm-hmm. but I know that I, I got a DS uh, so that we could play this Animal Crossing game together, and we were uh, long distance. We're about five or six hours apart from each other, and... Oh, wow. Um, when I wouldn't be crazy and just drive all the way up there in, in a night just to to go visit, um, we would we would go on dates and Animal Crossing together. Oh, that's so and, sweet. And I just absolutely like it was such a great thing for us to bond and to mm-hmm. grow in our relationship. Like so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and eventually, even when my wife finally moved into town, um, we we still continued that and and visiting each other and and playing and. Um, so sweet. We even carried that over into New Leaf with going to the island together and oh, <laughs> fishing cute. and stuff together. It's it's yeah, the mini so games adorable. on New Leaf were super fun. <laughs> um, and then with City Folk, um, I did go. Uh, I, I was a little bit more brave. Um, I did want to use the We Speak, so I did go to a lot of people's towns and invite people over to my towns and things. And I don't think I had any bad experiences with that. Um, but, uh, that was something that kind of, I, I'd go to work and then I'd come home and the town was completely changed and different oh. because while I was gone, my wife was working on it, on oh, everything. Well, that's one thing. I, I was afraid that somebody was getting invited that shouldn't have been like chopping down trees. <laughs> so it actually negatively affected my nostalgia for the game though. Because, oh, no. like, I didn't want to play it because it wasn't, it was no longer, like, my customized thing. Right, right, right. And so, like, and I was perfectly fine with, like, you know, playing Wild World and then letting, since it was portable and I didn't get to play on TV much anyway. So, yeah. um, it kind of became my wife's thing that, that he would do. And that was a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, adjusting to figure out, like, how I would play in this world. And I was like, you know, ultimately, I think I just need my own own thing yeah. so we we definitely got separate new leafs and uh, we'll be getting we're getting are getting separate of the new horizon so yeah that's a good thing i think it's i think it's <laughs> helped to get that point if you're not having fun with it or it's affecting your nostalgia for it for sure <laughs> um and and also i think in a lot of ways that quick turnaround um, having wild world and playing it so much and just rolling right into city folk i was a little burnout in some ways yeah. Um, so I didn't have the desire to go and try to collect everything again, though it was pretty cool that I could actually port my character over 
from Wild World into City Folk. That was right, a really right. cool feature, and I was sad to see that that yeah. didn't carry forward into New Leaf. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think they only did that once. Yep. I think you could still purchase. You had to like purchase all your items again from like a catalog. Um, you but you could you could port your character over and everything, and and I know I would run around in both games. I would always wear the stupid like Egyptian, uh, like the, king like mask. the head. Yeah, yeah I know they, which one you're they, talking like, about. It curses you yeah. and makes you trip and fall. Yep. And in oh, Wild World, I love that one so much. In Wild World, you get like yep. insurance, like you get money back for doing that. And I was like, yep. I, I, I took advantage of that. Yep. <laughs> I think that's gonna be what I'm gonna run around in. Uh, in uh, New Horizons, if it has that item, I does love the that same thing. thing. Yeah, I can't imagine that they wouldn't have it. It's such a staple, I think. <laughs> I forgot about it until you just mentioned it, but I think I wore it all the time. <laughs> yep. I, I don't know, like ridiculous. The Samus helmet just doesn't look right to me, but that one, <laughs> that one was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I just put most of my Nintendo ones on display in my house at that point. Um, it was way late in the game i remember getting a strategy guide um and i don't know if you you guys think that it's like a necessity to have a strategy guide for animal crossing just for the checklist but i do kind of where i sit (laughs) i do it's a it's a like in like the new one that's coming out for new horizons they're calling a companion guide that's exactly what it is to me i need Mm -hmm. it for referencing and i it's not like i'm trying to cheat or anything I'm not you, if you. It's not a walkthrough. There's no way that you can do a walkthrough with new or Animal Crossing at all. But yeah, I use it as a companion guide for sure. I am afraid. Um, so in New Leaf, um, my wife made a spreadsheet of all the items and stuff. Had once uh, where to just find like it, me. where to get everything. Yeah, I do exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> and so like I-, I am scared for this new one if it has even more items <laughs> it will and i'm so excited <laughs> oh um, yeah, I-, I think the last time i got a player's guide was or whatever you call it would would be for like kid icarus uprising and that was just because it came with an ar card <laughs> but oh i animal forgot crossing, about those yeah yeah animal crossing is definitely one of those that i feel like makes a lot of sense even in this day and age to get a book for um mm-hmm. just to have your own checklist and stuff to go with it i probably won't just because it's extra money but <laughs> yeah. but yeah if, if you were to get a book for one game now i would i would still recommend that one um, i believe I that there's an app the... that you can use it as a checklist yeah okay well that makes that part at least a lot easier yeah i know right <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't hear word if it was a free app or not, but yeah, there there is an app for you can use for a checklist and things. I guess they already have it loaded with items that are in the game, which I don't know. I feel like that's cheating, but <laughs> that's just a little bit. <laughs> What's cool now that they couldn't do then is they can add stuff in that that isn't there now, like you know, through mm-hmm. I don't know DLC or events and that kind of thing, updates yeah. rather. Oh. I'm sure DLC is going to be like crazy with this game. They'll be selling like little sets for 75 cents in the eShop and mm-hmm. I'll buy all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, At least, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. it won't be a surprise when it pops up. Nope. Um, I, I, I remember, I, I'm trying to remember if it was the Wii one or just the GameCube one, but there were codes you could put in, I believe, and get it certain was- items. Yeah, it was the GameCube one for sure. Uh, I don't remember doing it much for Wild World and City Folk, though. I don't know mm-hmm. if there was that function. Okay. But that's how you got the NES games, pretty much, for a GameCube. Yeah, I know there was like that, um, not Game Shark, whatever it was then. Um, those codes you could put in and get some of it. But there were yeah. actual, like, action replay. Action replay, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there, I remember there was other, I think there was events or something Nintendo had that you could put in a code they gave you. Mm-hmm. I could be mixing something up, but even on City Folk that you could do something somewhere with. Yeah. Um, I think that was some of the Nintendo items, maybe. Oh, I think you're right. Especially the Mario items, because I remember I had a Mario room in City Folk. Yeah, I think you're right. I know I ended up, um, I ended up trading in my Wild World uh, when I when I knew I could port my character over to City Folk, um, it, it was a while back. I'm like, oh, well, I still have the Wii version, so I don't need to worry about keeping this, and I traded it in for I don't even know what. But um, um, at the time, like, 
it was the best thing ever. I didn't re- even notice because I didn't play the first game. I didn't notice that it was a stripped down version. Um, they wanted to fit in the the Wi-Fi aspect of it and the social aspect of it, and so they they cut out a lot of things um, that made Animal Crossing special to a lot of original fans. And so it kind of kind of really didn't shine for a lot of Animal Crossing fans as much, other than the fact that it was portable and you could play it everywhere. That right. was a big big thing, um, and a lot of like similar to like the Switch now. Like, yeah, you can get this game, um, but is it portable? Well, on the Switch, it is portable. You can take it on the go, but you can mm-hmm. also have that home console experience. So, um, again, I didn't play a lot of Animal Crossing when City Folk came around. Um, and so I was ready for New Leaf when that came out. And then I lost New Leaf, and now I am definitely ready for New Horizons uh, to get into that yes. and just get lost in it. Like. I don't even know if I'm going to like the game, but I know that I'm going to get addicted to it. And just uh, I'm play sure it you will like it. it. From what I'm seeing, it's definitely the culmination of all of the game since. It looks like it's going to be amazing. Awesome. It looks pretty, too. Like, that's, that's another I thing. I know. Uh, the tree textures are killing me. I'm just, <laughs> I just, I don't, I'm going to feel bad chopping them down for branches and stuff. <laughs> the shading. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now with, um, with wild worlds, um, they, they took everything in it and basically just transplanted it on the Wii, made it a console game and they added a, a city element to it. Um, and it was just taking like all the shops that you'd normally go to and put them in in a cityscape area, um, when they first announced this, uh, for me, I was really excited. Like, I was, like, I always wondered what, like, Animal Crossing would be like in a city setting. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like skyscrapers, which wasn't what the what the case, what this was. But Right, right, right. Um, it was it was interesting. Um, now, I want to get into a little bit of characters for the game. Um, do you have any favorite character, like, that you've carried over? Maybe from Wild Lord or City Folk? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Katrina is my baby. Uh, I just yeah. love Katrina so much, because, probably because she's a cat, but uh, mm-hmm. I just really loved that she had her own little stall in um, City Folk, and then she got it again in New Leaf. Um, and then I'm trying to think. I like I like Pascal the Otter, but he's not mm-hmm. really a shopkeeper by any mm-hmm. means, but I just... I think he's so cute. Just the way he like flops into the river and floats mm-hmm. down the river is so cute. <laughs> and um, I think the only other one that I'm really attached to is Kix, the skunk. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Kix. Kix is Kix is my favorite in, yeah. in that city. Absolutely. Yeah. When he got like... when he got an amiibo figure, I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so charming. <laughs> yeah. Just adorable. Love the little Cockney accent on him and all that stuff. <laughs> cute. I like him and I like Gulliver. Um, mm-hmm. oh, and yeah. um, I I have a love hate relationship for Red. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Like, I mean, I really enjoy the the collecting the paintings, and for me, it was really easy in New Leaf because I'm an art I, I'm an art kid, and I took all these art history courses in school, mm. so I was like, that's easily the forgery because it's not it doesn't look like the real one. That's so awesome. yeah, I knew exactly which ones to pick and which <laughs> not to pick. Um, but. Yeah, filling the museum was easy for that. But, I mean, you know, Red's just trying to make a buck, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, Gosh. I hated him. He was a jerk. Like, I'd spend, like, 4,000 bells or whatever it was. It was an odd number, I think. But, and he'd get me most of the, well, not most of the time. I don't know. I could, some of it was kind of obvious. Mm-hmm. Like, if you knew the paintings at all, like, there'd be some big, goofy flaw in it or something. But he just <laughs> yeah. let you do it. And, like, you couldn't get your money back. I was like, you know how many fish I caught for that thing? <laughs> but it would, it would give me something to put in my house. Like, it looked ridiculous, but I would still put it up in my house. Yeah. Um, I guess for a favorite one for me, though, it's always been Cap'n. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's been in his boat, and he's had his bus and all of that thing. Um, but he's just uh, always been a fun addition. It's, I always thought it was kind of funny when you're trying to travel somewhere. And it does take some extra time, but he comes up with some goofy song on the yep. way there um some are awkward bit... yeah yeah it is <laughs> i i but... sometimes just get the gamecube song like stuck in my head 
It's so cute. I still remember that. Yep. God. But I, I don't think he's in the new game from what I've heard. I hope he um, is in some capacity. If he's not, he I'm going to be really be. upset. At some point. Well, I actually kind of have a funny story with his amiibo. Is I found it at a... I, I can't remember the name of it because we don't have them here. But I think... Is it Five and Below, I think? Five Below, yep. Oh, like five that. Below. Yeah. So they were on like big on a big sale, I guess. It was the end of 2018 or September. And I found him there. And we were on the way to Disney. So I was like, oh, I'm going to take pictures and stuff, you know, this whole trip. And I, I took a few, but I mostly forgot. But he rode in my pocket through Magic Kingdom, I, I think, Aww, more than more. That's so, <laughs> so cute. So he's been to Disney. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so do you have any favorite characters that you've carried over besides Cap'n? Um, off the top of my head, I mean, like, it wouldn't be Animal Crossing without Tom Nook. Right, um, right. And K.K. Slider, that's another big one. But really, other than that, I guess none, like, stand out. Now, with with the characters, um, like the NPCs, uh, were there any, like, particular villagers that stood out that you just absolutely loved and would love to have in your town again? Uh, my New Leaf, my New Leaf town was all cats. So mm-hmm. I actually would go online and trade villagers for bells with people. Oh, yeah. And that's getting yeah. it expensive. You want to talk? Like, I was lucky. I got Meringue and Marshall in my town just randomly, and those are both really popular. And so mm-hmm. I sold each of them for maybe like 70 million bells each. Um, but, wow. you know, some of the, like, Bob is expensive, but Anka is on the higher end. Uh, but it's a lot of selling and stuff back then, at least. Now I own every single amiibo card, and I just <laughs> have to tap it in, and they come right into my village. So it's going to be great. Uh, but Anka the Egyptian girl cat and Kabuki, the Japanese like Kabuki cat are mm-hmm. probably my two favorite. I also like ketchup, the duck. Hmm. Ketchup. I don't think I've met that one. Ketchup was, <laughs> was a, one of the original ones. Uh, she's literally just got a tomato for a head and like a little green sprout for hair. It's super cute. Huh. She was one of the original characters in the GameCube version, but she only came back in new leaf through the welcome amiibo thing with the RVs. So yeah. if you if you didn't get that card, which I know you said that you all missed out on them, then you wouldn't mm-hmm. have gotten her. Mm-hmm. But I hope she's in this one. Mm-hmm. Josh, do you have any favorites? Yeah, so honestly, yeah, Bob was always a favorite one of mine. He was one of my first ones I remember from the GameCube game. Mm-hmm. Um, what was Bob? A purple cat. He's a cat. Okay. okay. He's a Bob lazy cat. cat. <laughs> yeah, he's lazy. He's a bit weird. But I like him. <laughs> He's always been there. <laughs> yep. Um, and another one more recently, I, and I'm a terrible animal friend person, I guess, but I can't think of his name. He's a brown alligator dude. Is it? I think it's starts with Al something. I cannot think of his name. Is it Alfonso? Maybe. I, can't I know remember. there's. I know there's a turquoise alligator, and her name is Allie with an I, but I don't okay. know. I'm not. Big on the brown. reptiles. I I'd have to look. Well, anyway, he's cool. <laughs> Alfonso. It's Alfonso. Alfonso. That is yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was thinking of them through my head. And I was like, oh, I know this guy. Yep. So yeah, I'd like him back. Um, there was another one I'm thinking of. And now it's totally escaped me. Um, there's a lot of them though. If you really look back, there's um, there's oh. another there's another one that I like. That's another cat. It's Tangy, the orange cat. Yeah. I think, I've, I think I've had that one. So if it if it counts, just as a, I guess it doesn't count, but on, on the Welcome Amiibo thing, um, I remember inviting Ganon to my yes. house. Yes! <laughs> and, and Wolf Link and Epona. Oh, gosh. Yeah, They're if, if, cute. As a, an, an extra favorite, Ganon definitely would be on there, because that was kind of hilarious, having him show up to, like, my <laughs> surprise birthday party and things like that. Yeah. I'm so sad I missed out on that. Oh gosh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Great. It was awesome. Take, of course. I think they had a uh, Inkwell was the name of the squid that was the Splatoon squid. That's it was awesome. Really... I have to send you like I think. Oh, you know what? They had the Monster Hunter cat. I think if you tapped that one in, Feline showed up and from Happy Home Designer showed up in your town too. Huh. Yep. 
Awesome. Just a little Siamese. Yeah, I love the crossovers. They did a really good job with that. I'm really bad about names of characters that I like, so I there's just, 400 of them. <laughs> I, I just have a, a character show up. And, oh yeah, I really like them in such and such game. I don't remember their names. Like there was a mouse, there was a penguin, and there was a bear that I liked. Um, there are lots of mice, penguins, and bears. <laughs> I know, I know. There's so many um, penguins, and they're like not very different comparatively. There was this grumpy bear, and I just I made it my mission to be his friend. Grizzly. Uh, <laughs> No, I don't think it was Grizzly. He oh, was I had like, Grizzly in my original time. He was like a bodybuilder or something. I don't know. Bodybuilder. <laughs> he was all obsessed with like bodybuilding and health and stuff. That's funny. I have to I'd have to remember that. <laughs> I'm like thinking said, of a gorilla that sounds like that description. Yeah. So it's not the same guy. I I'm big <laughs> on the cat the cat villagers and stuff, but uh, and I like the ducks too. My sister is a big duck person. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute! I just thought of another character that I hope they bring back. I'm sorry. Is Bl- Go for is it. it, Blanca, or Blanca? Yeah. Your name? The one where you draw her face. Yeah. The NPC. Yeah. Thing. There was, I wonder if we're gonna there, see her again. We had some good laughs out of that one. It was all clean, <laughs> by the way. It was yeah. good. Mostly, if if it was. It, it, we were like 12 when the first one came out, so some of it was kind of funny, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Speaking of clean, that's a perfect segue into what I wanted to talk about next, and that is, what phrases did you get your villagers to say? <laughs> um, I was, I never really liked them saying dumb things, so I wanted them to say cute things. Me and my sister, like, but when this game, came, the original GameCube game came out, you know, I was... 13 and my sister was 10 so we were into cute things still and um i don't know we just we we made them say things like muffin and sugar cube and (laughs) cutie pie stuff like that so uh (laughs) typical girly nonsense i guess we never did anything dirty or or mean or anything like that it's probably better the, the the cute girly nonsense is probably better than a twelve year old boy nonsense. <laughs> probably like, oh, we made him say poop, oh, you know. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I know that me and my sister and my cousins like came up with ridiculous stuff for them to say. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing like bad, but it was just kind of like awful puns and things. Yeah. Or like kind of like the like calling you like something along the lines of like Royal Highness or something like that. Like, you know, th- <laughs> that kind of idea. That's funny. <laughs> it's like, I am king of this land. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you guys dive much into like patterns? Did you make your own patterns? Did you like look up endless amounts of, of patterns online like pixel art and try to create that in game? Um. <laughs> I, I not for Wild World or City Folk, but okay. for for New Leaf, I think I have like maybe a couple hundred patterns saved <laughs> from like Japanese. Like the Japanese creators are just so incredible with their designs. Um, I had this amazing trench coat, uh, just like regular dress, but it, it, they mm-hmm. made it look like a trench coat with a like knitted sweater underneath, and I never took that thing off. It was incredible. Mm. That was my fall winter outfit. So I'm very excited that New Horizons is going to keep those same QR codes because I'm going to be going through my new leaf and just click, 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 <laughs> and getting all of them into the new one. But I also mm-hmm. did like a lot of patterns. I I use them for pathways on my ground mm-hmm. after the whole dirt. It took me forever to get my grass to grow back. I did the time traveling just to get my grass to grow back. Oh, yeah, and I, yeah. I laid down paths just so they would come back. Uh, so I found some good, uh, like, fake water tiles to kind of make, like, moats. And then um, just really nice gravel path stone to use on the on the floor. I was obsessed with checkerboard. Like, black and white checkerboard like that was the pattern that i would try to make um in some form like i'd I'd have a shirt that would be that and i know that for my flag i would have a metroid um laid out um i don't remember a lot of the other patterns i know i had to have a boo like oh there was 
there was a pattern that I had that wrapped around that showed like like Boo like hiding the face and then Boo sticking the tongue out. Oh, that's so cute. And like I had to have I that. Seriously, was it? I don't know if you said a Boo like the Boo from Mario or a Boo <laughs> like the monkey from Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I figured out what he meant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was, I think I probably pulled all of that stuff from one of the strategy guides or what have you, but I really wanted those those patterns in my town. Like, I, I'm not artistic whatsoever when it comes to creating those things. Um, I hear that there was an, there's a, is an app that'll turn pictures into pixelation, like, pictures of them, too. Like, I think I heard Bobby, uh, Nintendo Guru, talk about how he had a picture of, like, his dog that passed away or something, and he puts, like, a oh, shrine in his yeah. games for that. Um, and that that's pretty cool. Like, I wanted like see if I can find some pictures and and put them in game. Um, if I can pixelate them, if they look good, you know, recognizable at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I remember tr- attempting to make some patterns like back in the day. I I don't remember if it was GameCube or Wii or what it was, but like before the QR codes. Mm-hmm. And looking back, they were probably terrible. Like <laughs> I, I remember one. I think I did a pretty decent Sonic actually. And I did use that for like everything, um, like the flag and stuff, because just because I did so awesome with it, spent too, so much time on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but after that, like the QR code stuff, I, I did make a Huey from DuckTales, like the 8-bit version of it. Yeah. Them. And that nice. was okay. But And I made a couple other little things, but a lot of those actually was more into just like taking the good creations <laughs> offline or mm-hmm. online. <laughs> Um, like there is the Mario um, 64 paintings out there that I remember yeah. scanning in and using yeah. those. Um, there was one that was Colonel Sanders that was just funny. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why I saved that one. But, That's awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to taking advantage of those because I, I like making my own and I probably will. But I, I know I'll be more about probably just going out and scanning the the cool stuff like that. Mm. Oh, I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do with this new game. Um, I hear that it smooths out a lot of things. So it like it, if you put right. it on a shirt or something, Aliasing and stuff. It looks looks great on that, and I'm kind of curious to see what what can be done with that. I think there's a lot of creativity that we haven't seen yet, and you know you know like you go on Mario Maker and you see people make these crazy things um, that like how do they do that? Like there was never what was intended for the creators for sure. And mm-hmm. so, like, I'm kind of, like, this is, like, even bigger sandbox than that. And mm-hmm. and it was awesome to have that feature to be able to go look at other people's towns and mm-hmm. see what they have going and how they've customized it. But this is kind of on a grander scale because there's so much there with terraforming and everything. Yeah. Like, we could see some just amazing things. And, yeah, I, I don't know where I'm going to go with this and I'll just be kind of crazy and artistic and maybe it'll make no sense, but yeah. I'm going to have fun doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I can't wait. Uh, is uh, there I think um, it's part of what makes but, them so good though, is you can just make it your own. Yeah. It might, who cares what it looks like junk to everybody else. Just you get a lot to play with and just do what you want with it. Mm-hmm. With uh, wild worlds, I was, big into um kind of creating and customizing things on my own like at the time i had this book called hacking myspace and i learned how to do some basic coding and stuff and i would i I basically designed my own myspace and kind of hijacked everything and made it my own and made it have its own like everything like i just read it everything and so like i would also do that kind of stuff in wild world to what limitations that i had you know but just Mm -hmm. putting in a lot of pixel art and i ported a lot of that pixel art i was very creative in this time um i'm not super artistic but like i i get going and like i can do some pretty cool things and i I just had a blast with this this time in my life um that's why nostalgia is so strong for wild worlds like sometimes i I think that probably wild world is probably my favorite animal crossing so far just because of how much my artistic side came out in the game and uh, just how much I, I poured into it in the time that I, I, I don't know what I clocked in at. I know, like, <laughs> oh, hundreds I, and hundreds of hours. <laughs> I, I don't even want to think about how many thousands of hours I wasted on that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it just I, it's weird that I have the most nostalgia, obviously, for the original one. And that one is really, if I played it now, I don't know if I would 
have the same opinion, but just thinking about how much I loved it kind of makes me feel like I don't know if I could ever dethrone that one from being my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I could go back and, and play it. I hear it's hard to. I mean, I see a lot of people speed run it, but that's speed running it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Um, so I will say one of the major flaws of Wild World was the fact that it was a portable system and it could die. And if oh. it died, <laughs> you, have, you have to deal with Mr. Rossetti. Rossetti, yep. That and happened. just before they fixed it, <laughs> you know, yep. it made it tolerable no 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 if your battery died there was no forgiveness yep. whatsoever mm -hmm. if you wanted to play animal crossing one does not simply play animal crossing <laughs> <laughs> if you're dealing with sir <laughs> uh, and, and children now that are just playing this new game for the first time are never going to understand the horrors <sighs> and the annoyance the more you did it the longer his monologues got Yep. I'm kind of secretly hoping that if you use the teleportation like too much, like too to get much. out of situations, you might actually see him pop up, and I would be so happy yeah. to see that. Yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. Good cameo. <laughs> they played the music. It's gonna happen. I just know it. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> Did you guys ever pay off any of your houses ever? Yes. Yeah. Ever. Oh, I have never. That that what that's the number one thing that i do is max out the house and get it as much as i can and i'm one of those people that tries to 100 percent animal crossing where mm -hmm. i fill out the catalog and i finish my house as much as i possibly can get all clothes get all the museum items and stuff like that so yeah if i don't finish the house within the first month i'm gonna be upset with myself <laughs> Yeah, I'd go for the, I think in the a GameCube one, I can't remember if it was in the other ones, but there's like a trophy you can get of yourself. That's yeah. for a big statue. Like yep, out in it's front a of statue. The train station. Mm -hmm. Huh. That's interesting. Do you think that we'll see um, as much uh, kind of social interactions in this game do you think it's so open now that we could just go to anybody's town and do anything um i know they did fix the whole like cutting down all your trees thing <laughs> with a best friend mechanic only your best friends could could destroy mm. your your digital live <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um do you see a lot of people like do you see all of us as a community just visiting each other's towns and hanging out like in a digital space like is that something that that's going to happen or are we going to be pretty much solitary and kind of just doing our own thing i'm a little worried like that uh, i mean for me i'm gonna be solitary up until i get my town the way that i want it to be or my island mm -hmm. and i just want to make sure that everything's manicured and perfect before i start mm -hmm. letting people in the only exception i think is i'll trade people fruit uh because i know yeah. that everybody wants to get all of the fruit first but yes. after that i think that i would definitely be one of those like hey, let's go hang out in yours, or uh, you can come hang out in mine type thing. So what is one to do during that time? Go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. I was uh, that my, What I was going to say may kind of lead into that is I just hope there's enough to do. Yeah. Um, I know, like, in, I think it was New Leaf at the Island, there was at least, like, many games and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just takes, like, the right two people <laughs> to be able to make something of it. Yeah. Um, because I don't know if there really is a whole lot to really objectively do other than like, I don't know, fish or just like show off your stuff or whatever. Um, give you a place to chat and, you know, be able to half play a game at the same time sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I need to grab my uh, my Wii keyboard, my wireless keyboard. And yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I need to dig that out again and make sure the battery, I've got batteries for it. Ooh, I need to do that before quarantine hits. <laughs> oh, no. Jeez. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about batteries. That's a good call. Oh. Yep, that's going to be awesome to be able to do that that interaction. Now, there is the Nintendo app that we can use to, to communicate with each other. So it's kind of the the return of that, that headset or the We Speak or what have you. Um, yeah. There, You could use the mic in Wild or uh, New Leaf, but I don't remember ever being very social on that game. No. 
especially if it was portable most of the time everybody was just together in the same room and we were doing it over local for the most part for me i hope that we can stargaze together that'd be kind of cool oh yeah that'd be cute just like being able to like all look up and then it would Mm -hmm. actually tilt the screen yeah that'd be cute but there's a lot of characters we don't know about I remember in actually the old ones that I almost forgot about, and I'll probably do in this one, is for years, even if I'm not like actively keeping up with it real well, is I remember turning it on during New Year's. Um, Like we always do this big thing for New Year's, and especially when we were doing it at my house, I would have it on in the other room, like if it was the GameCube one, and I'd always have Animal Crossing set up, or the 3DS one, I had it up a few times. Mm -hmm. Um, Just have the fireworks. Yeah. Yeah. So did in in IRL did you guys set your 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 schedule your timer to to watch uh, KK Slider perform on yes. Saturday? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It was something we did every Saturday. Uh, <laughs> it, we sometimes we would be out and we would miss him and that was like really devastating to us, especially back in the GameCube days. So oh, yeah, we would yeah. we would like set the clock on the GameCube back just a couple hours to make sure that we got the song for the week. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's something that we always did, and I still do it. Mm-hmm. Now, I think I may have time-traveled um, on Wild World. I don't think I did it at all in in City Folk. Um, now, how? What kind, what is your moral compass when it comes to time traveling (laughs) the only time i've ever time traveled uh on purpose was to regrow my grass Mm -hmm. and that's not going to be a problem anymore uh but yeah i just i'm one of those people that if you want to just skip ahead to the holidays it's not why did you buy the game if you didn't want to experience like it in real time for all holidays throughout the year like i know some people can't commit to being on there that day and if you want to rewind it like a day just to be on there for thanksgiving if you missed it on thanksgiving day i totally understand that but going out of your way to make it christmas in the middle of march right now would be kind of ridiculous so i'm i'm glad that they are doing measures with new horizons to thwart that which is they're installing it as um like local or dlc for the time Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh, do you have any uh, opinions on that? Yeah, I'm I'm glad they kind of keep people, or they're trying to keep people from doing that so much mm-hmm. now. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like it kind of ruins it for for everybody, especially with it being more social. And since you'll be going online, and like, you know, if it's next month and you go somewhere and someone's got Christmas stuff up that you're not supposed to have yet, like that would be kind of weird. But yeah, I know true. I did it back in the GameCube days because, mm-hmm. like, I, I didn't know what the game was back then and i was just experimenting with it and we figured out that you could you know there were holidays and things like that and that you could just change the time and i know i played around with it for a while Mm -hmm. i even made a second gamecube town because i had went so out of just left field with it like things were weeds were everywhere Mm -hmm. and i think i went a few years in the future just to see what would happen oh my gosh <laughs> so like everybody was mad and like it was just it was becoming a disaster <laughs> yeah but no I, I don't do that anymore like if if i could in the new one i, I think you still can to an extent but i'm not going to um yeah. so yeah I, i've i'm guilty but it's it's been a while since i've pulled that off i get really bothered when i time travel because of daylight savings and then i get in trouble for it like and I think it was Wild World, and I got so upset that I upset you know Mr. Rossetti because I just changed the time because of the time change. Right, right. Yeah, um, they didn't really kind of compensate for that. Um, unfortunately. No, they didn't. Yeah, that's the one. I think now because of your internal clock on your switch, it will just automatically go based on what time zone you're in, especially if it's hooked to the internet. There was a game I was just recently doing time traveling in on Switch, and I don't know why. It was it may have been a year or two ago. Couldn't tell you why I was doing it, but yeah, mm-hmm. apparently you can do it, and it's fairly easy because I was doing it pretty quickly, like going yeah. back and forth. But I don't know if it's worth it. 
Um, I really don't think so. But um, now my favorite feature, I think, in all of Animal Crossing, the thing that keeps me coming back is the descriptions of items um, when you catch fish, <laughs> when you catch bugs, like, you know, there's uh, so many DM puns. And, yes, the puns are just, that's, that's a silly great. thing to love Animal Crossing over, but that is my favorite thing, oh. like, to see what new things they've come up with. And... They're so good. I can't wait to read what they are this time, too. <laughs> uh, I, and the kick I got out of the most recent one in New Leaf with, with the sea bass, like, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh another yeah, sea yeah. bass. <laughs> you know? Another one, yep. <laughs> oh i cannot wait to see what the writers the localization team has done with this one because mm -hmm. oh yes that is the biggest thing like i love collecting items because i like to see what the descriptions are and that's Absolutely. that's true in like even in pikmin when i get items and find out what they call them in, yeah, in yeah, pikmin, yeah. you know that's just something that always draws me into games for collecting and i cannot wait to experience these new ones mm -hmm. um that's something that i treasure a lot um and it may seem dumb to like this whole game over that, but that's like my biggest, biggest thing. So what is your biggest like enjoyment out of this game that always brings you back? Is it the character interactions? Is it the collection? Is it just, just what? It, what is it? I think it's collecting for me. It's collecting and manicuring things. Like I just like, I, it's it's very therapeutic for me to have a house that I can maintain and have flowers that I can maintain. <laughs> and now I'm going to be able to landscape and do all this other stuff. That's just going to be great. So uh, for me, it's just kind of a simulation game where I can control everything is it brings me like a lot of comfort for some mm -hmm. reason. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I personally like the customization of it, um, especially the, the, more grand it becomes um with the newer games like just being able to collect as much stuff as you can like different types of furniture and things like that and mix it mm -hmm. all together like you know put your favorite things in there the way you want it to be um making the town flag what you want it to be yep. um you can reference something heck i remember um our church like logo at one time I'm, i made the flag that it's just stuff like in the real world <laughs> you, something to you, you know yeah um as silly as, as it all may sound um you know and music the music the town tune thing town yeah. Tune. yeah um i just like making it like uniquely yours mm -hmm. i'm hoping that going forward like the social aspect becomes something that i really cherish even beyond the collecting um, you know, I did go on dates with my wife and in these Animal Crossing games, and I, I want to expand that to friendships and just hanging out and, and doing things like with people that I don't, I'm not able to do that with, you know, sure. live states away, live, live countries away, what have you, stuck in a home because of stupid virus, you know, mm -hmm. like being able to be with people and hang out and do things together still. Um, I hope that that's something that I'll cherish going through forward with this. And we're kind of hitting it a really yeah. good time for Animal Crossing to come out um, and just be a community in the game. Yeah, it was very uh, serendipitous, I guess is the word. Like yeah. nobody knew that it was going to happen like this. But if the game had released in December, most people would be kind of over it at this point, you yeah. know. And now everybody's getting it and even though we can't go out, we're not going to have to. Yeah. Um, it, it sounds like this is going to be a very, very good thing for Nintendo. Like, they're going to bring in a lot of money for this one. A lot. Um, my my friend went to get a Switch, and uh, Switch, before all the, the problems with shipping and things, like just normal shipping stuff was going on, the Switch was backlogged till April 30th. You could mm -hmm. not get a system on, on Amazon. So, yeah, yeah it's... <laughs> It's definitely a lot of people are getting the system just for Animal Crossing. A lot of the Animal Crossing fans are coming yep. over finally and, and making the jump. And yeah, yep. it's that, good to see. Huge. That, that timing could be could be a lot of help. Um, like I said, nobody could have predicted that. But especially with a lot of people being stuck. And it's a very like therapeutic sort of game anyway. Yep. Yeah. So I think it could be perfect. If you're stressed, this will relax you. And this in this troubled time, like this is going to be the perfect medicine. Mm -hmm. I agree. And it's a good counter to Doom if you get Doom as well. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just give a shout out to the Doom and Animal Crossing communities getting together and just like creating it's content? So good. It's, 
<laughs> did you have you seen the the GameStop like header uh, on their Twitter page? Is instead of Doom, it says Nook, and it's got oh, yes. Nook space on the <laughs> so good. They had a collector's edition mock up of Doom, and it had Isabel with a shotgun. Well, I saw that one. Amiibo. That's so amazing. Yes. <laughs> oh. They uh, when they announced the Animal Crossing Direct, I think it was a little while back. Um, Nintendo was like, hey, you know, be here for, for the Direct and all this. And the Doom Twitter account commented, is Isabel going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, lately I've been shamelessly getting into uh, covers of songs done in uh, KK Slider style. Yes, you and <laughs> yeah. me both. I get on the YouTube all the time and just like, there's this one guy on YouTube that is really good and I gotta find out what his name is, but he's done like Toto Africa mm-hmm. and he's mm-hmm. done um, Take On Me. Uh, just so so many good 80s songs that really, really fit. Both of those songs I just listened to in the car yesterday on the way yeah. work. Like I have it on those two on my playlist. Yeah. Uh, of just random stuff. I I just found that um channel I guess like a week or two ago. <laughs> yeah, they're great. They're great. <laughs> uh, any any Animal Crossing content I can get right now, I am just so ready oh. and I, I I'm so happy. Like it's been I've deprived myself so long. I was gonna start up another New Leaf and I never did. Uh, Because, like, you know what? Eventually, we're going to get the Wii U version, and and I'll play that. And we even got that. We even got that Wii U, like, weird app thing. I I don't even know. Oh, yeah. I I remember. I've got that still (laughs) downloaded on there where you could just, it was like the big tree, and everybody came around it. It took forever to load up. Like, forever. Like, I know Wii U is so already. Mm -hmm. So, um, Wild World is on there. Yes. If you ever feel the need to, to go try it out on there, it is there. Yeah, if you'd like to play it, you can access oh, yeah. Wild World on the Wii on the Wii U Virtual Console. Yep. Um, I, and of course, you can always pick up City Folk and play play Wii games on the Wii U. So the Wii U is still viable for playing these older games. Um, you just have to figure out something for the original Animal Crossing. But mm-hmm. no GameCube Virtual Console yet. Yet. <laughs> but it'll happen someday. Mm-hmm. Crazy. They will make a return. Yep. <laughs> I agree. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the episode. So thank you so much for coming on, Carol. Uh, yeah, it was awesome dude. having you on and talking Animal Crossing. <laughs> I know. Now I just want to go and cry and wait until Friday. <laughs> Maybe I can just knock myself out with sleeping pills until then. <laughs> It'll be out when this episode goes up, but right now we're still like three days away. Yep. Yep. We have to wait. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm trying to fill the void with Picross and Picross is good, and a little bit of Pokemon Go just to do something. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to get into thing too heavy because I know that I'm just gonna lose my life to Animal Crossing. It'll be awesome. Yeah. Like I have, I don't have Friday off. I have half day Friday, so I'm gonna be uh, starting a little late, and then but I have all Saturday off to play. So I'm gonna try to remember to eat. It's going to be hard to do. Oh, I know. Eating is the hardest thing for me to do with, with <laughs> anything, pretty much. Yeah. But it'll all be worth it. We'll all be in Animal Crossing land soon enough, and I'm yep. really excited. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, do you want to go ahead and plug uh, where people can find you, uh, watch you on your channel and everything? Sure. I am the Nintendame. Unfortunately, I could not just do Nintendame because that's uh, apparently taken already. But I'm the Nintendame over on Twitch and over on Twitter. Uh, Pretty much those are the only places that I am currently. uh, YouTube is like weird for me because I, there's a way that I can probably get my streams to simulcast, but mm-hmm. I haven't figured that out yet. And I used to just upload old streams to YouTube, but then it took too long. So um, yeah, Twitch and Twitter, the Nintendo. That's about it. Cool. Awesome. Josh, where can I find you? Well, mostly on Twitter more than anything right now. It's at Whopper 744 games. Um, long story short, it's a really long name. But, yeah, that's mostly where I'm at right now. I hang out in the Facebook group on uh, the Nintendo Nostalgia Chat thing a lot, too. Discord, so. Oh, yeah, we do have a Discord. 
<laughs> oh no, I'm just kidding. We we have a Nintendo Village Discord, so um, you can find me um, at Metroid Hunter on Twitter and at Metroid Hunter 101 on everything else. Um, I do have a Twitch channel. Um, I am not able to stream right now. Uh, work schedule is just not allowing it. Um, it just I've not had a consistent schedule yet, but I'm working towards that, and soon I will be streaming too. But uh, you know, little steps at a time. I'm actually have a computer that is being built right now for me for nice. just dedicated to streaming. Um, it's nothing too fancy, but uh, my my housemate works on computers, and he's been piecing stuff together and getting me everything I need. So awesome. That is something that I should be able to do. I just got to find the time and carve out the time um, at work. And I'm training people. Once they're trained, they'll be able to take over for me, and I will have free time. So. That would be awesome. But um, in the meantime, uh, you can always listen to uh, to the show. Um, go to the nintendovillage.com slash Nintendo Nostalgia. Uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Uh, you can find us on our Facebook at Nintendo NOS, on our Twitter at Nintendo underscore NOS. And you can find us also on our Instagram at Nintendo NOS IN. Shoot us an email at Nintendo Nostalgia IN at gmail.com. And if you want to share your nostalgic memories, you can call into our hotline at 317 969 5690. Guys, that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you next week. Later, Preston. Bye. Quick, 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 quick,